Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal is joining us now uh, of Washington, and she is a member of the House Budget and Judiciary Committees involved with immigration reform. And I do want to ask you about that. But first, I have to ask about your reaction to President Trump tweeting just uh, an hour or so ago, only one thing will work in North Korea. What do you think he means? Well, Anna, I think it's incredibly irresponsible. These are war tweets is what it looks like. It's, uh, you know, undermining all of his negotiators who are trying to find other ways, I believe, to address the situation in North Korea. It's terrifying the country because I really don't believe that Americans want the United States to go to war unnecessarily. And they certainly don't want us to be the bullies in the schoolyard taunting North Korea to go to war with us. So this is really disturbing. Um, as your reporter said earlier, it follows on a very cryptic comment that when I heard that comment that, you know, this was the calm before the storm, honestly, I my heart was chilled because I do believe that this president has been itching to go to war. He certainly talked about it a lot during the campaign. He's continued to um, act as if we have no responsibility here for our actions and ensuring that North Korea does not attack us. So I think it's very, very troubling. Do you think he is listening to his military advisors? I think they are trying to perhaps hold him in check. Um, certainly since uh, John Kelly came in as chief of staff, you have seen a little bit more discipline. But I think it's very difficult to hold this president in check, which is what I find terrifying. He is the guy that's got his finger over that nuclear war button, he the codes. And I think that um, hopefully our military uh, commanders who are around him and who he does to some extent seem to listen to a little bit more than others, hopefully they understand um, that this is an extremely serious situation. You know, even Trump's former campaign uh, advisor, Steve Bannon, said that a military option is really not viable in North Korea. And so th that's also, you know, I think something that is very troubling because right now I feel like the president is undermining all of his negotiators and he's he's preventing us from perhaps finding a way through that isn't a military option. I mean, we heard all that drama earlier this week about Rex Tillerson and uh, the issue with the chief of staff trying to really rein in some control in the White House. What do you make of the timing of this tweet? Well, I think it's all coming together. You know, I think that Rex Tillerson probably did say some of the things that he, he certainly didn't deny saying them at the press conference. Um, and I think that he's very frustrated. You know, it's very difficult to have cabinet secretaries who are trying to do one thing um, when the president is trying to do another thing. And I think that any uh, any cabinet secretary would rail under that situation. And I think that's certainly what we've seen with Rex Tillerson. I do believe that Rex Tillerson seemed to be trying to talk about diplomatic negotiations. Um, and I think that, you know, increasingly every single cabinet secretary uh, that tries to assert some level of, you know, rational policy uh, is then contradicted by the person that they report to, by the commander in chief. And, and that's not any way to rule a country, certainly not any way to prevent war. Let me ask you about the immigration debate, the renewal deadline for the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. DACA came and went this past Thursday, and as it passed, yeah. roughly a quarter of eligible recipients had not yet filed to renew their status, those who will be up here in the next five months or so. Why do you think that is? Well, I think there are a lot of reasons. I think, you know, first of all, um, uh, we had written a letter. I was on this letter asking for the uh, deadline to be extended. It was a very short period of time. It was just a month. Um, we also asked for uh, an extension because there were many states that have large numbers of undocumented dreamers like Texas and Florida that were hit by the hurricane. And um, in those states, it was extremely difficult for people to deal with that uh, with all the issues around the hurricane and, you know, file for their for their renewal status. I also think I've talked to a lot of young people who say to me, look, I don't know if I trust this administration. And if I update my information, my address information, there are some young people that have actually moved addresses, moved mm -hmm. homes because they're afraid that they turned in this information. You know, we made a promise to them that if they turned in their information, if they told us where they lived, if they registered and they were eligible, that they would be safe. And in fact, what's happening now 
is if we're not able to come to a solution, then, um, it, you know, the, uh, the Homeland Security Department has all of the information of where they are. So I think there are also people who not only didn't know about the deadline, couldn't get the fees, uh, the money for the fees to apply, but I also think that there's a lot of people who are very afraid of once again turning in their information and perhaps having it used against them to deport them. Very quickly, if you will, will we see bipartisan legislation to protect these people, these dreamers? Well, the president promised that we would uh, bring forward the DREAM Act of 2017. That's what he told Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. And unfortunately now, Stephen Miller, somebody that I had called on for the president to fire from the White House because of his extremist views, he has gotten engaged and he is making it absolutely impossible for us to consider a bill with the kinds of things he's proposing. So we need a clean DREAM Act brought to the floor. And I hope that the president reigns in Stephen Miller, takes him back out of the picture and allows us Republicans and Democrats to bring forward the DREAM Act of 2017, which is the only bicameral and bipartisan bill um, on the DREAM Act, and it really is the solution. So I'm, I believe we need to do that. I hope we still can do it. And, uh, and I believe that a lot of my colleagues across the aisle know that it is the right thing to do and want to vote for, uh, for the DREAM Act. Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, thank you for joining us, and I hope to continue the conversation with you down the road. Thank you so much, Anna.